Tutorial 4. Logic. This is the first intermediate level tutorial. We will take our first steps into the world of logic. Let's start by loading MoFish 2. For those who didn't see the previous tutorials, MoFish 2 contains a single sprite called Animated Fish that has a swim animation and a room with an Animated Fish instance. Let's edit the Animated Fish sprite. So far, we have looked at the Canvas and Resources tabs. Let's enter the Logic tab. This tab has two basic editing areas. The top, which is used for adding events, and the bottom for adding actions. Events and actions are the building blocks for the event-driven concept of the studio. According to Wikipedia, we get a very complicated explanation. Event-based programming or event-driven programming is a programming paradigm in which the flow of the programming is determined by blah, blah, blah. Sounds complicated, but it's actually quite simple. Event-driven simply means we act in response to something that is happening. Some good examples are when the player presses fire, shoot a bullet. When a bullet collides with an enemy, destroy the enemy. When all enemies have been killed, move to the next level. Defining sprite behavior in this way is very effective and is how the studio gives life to characters. Let's start by making the fish move left whenever we press the left key. <laughs> we will start at the top with the events. Events are meant to answer the when question. When should the fish move? Browsing the list, you can see that there is a great variety of events, and we can't possibly go over all of them in the short time we have. I would therefore advise you to take advantage of the documentation and go over the events list independently when you have time. In our case, the answer to the when question is when a key is pressed, and we will therefore add a keypad event. The keypad event supports a few different options, but in our case, we will select key down. Click the left arrow and click OK. We have answered the when question. Now it's time to handle the what question. The answer to that question is we would like our fish to start moving left. We select the new left key down event in the top panel. Let's move the filter text box in the lower panel and type speed. This filtered the actions list and leaves us with actions which have something to do with speed. We will now select the set speed action and surprisingly set the speed for our fish. The action may be added by either double clicking it, dragging it to the right, or selecting it using your keyboard arrow keys and pressing enter. Personally, I find the keyboard keys to be the most comfortable. Using the mouse, we will set the direction of movement to the left, or 180 degrees, and set the size to 50. Let's run it in the simulator. Skip the menu stage. We have our fish just like before. Now, let's press the left arrow keyboard key. As you can see, the fish started moving to the left. Letting go of the left key won't make the fish stop, and it will keep moving on until it leaves the screen and can no longer be seen. Let's close the simulator and go back to the logic screen. We would now like to make the fish stop in its place whenever the key is released. Let's add another keypad event. This time, instead of key down, we will select the key up option and again the left arrow. Let's add another set speed action, this time using drag and drop. We would like to make the fish stop, so the default speed of zero is good for us, and the direction wouldn't make much of a difference. Let's run the game in the simulator once more. We press the left arrow keyboard key, and the fish moves left. 
Now I let go. Notice that the fish stopped moving. Pressing the left key again would restart the fish movement. Let's add one last functionality to the game before ending this tutorial. Currently, the fish is able to move outside the visible screen without ever getting back. We will now make the fish reappear from the right once it has completely left the screen. First, add a position event. Position events are triggered when the object interacts with the borders of the screen or room. In the dialog, we will keep screen selected in the context section, but change the state from before object leaves to after object leaves. This means our event will be triggered after the fish leaves the screen completely and is no longer visible. Next, check the left location indicator and click OK. We would now like to order our fish to move back to the right. For that purpose, we will use the Move To action. Since we only want our fish to move horizontally, there's no need for us to modify the Y value. We will set the new X position to 480. Since the screen dimensions are 480 pixels wide and 800 pixels in height, this will place the fish outside the visible screen to its immediate right. Let's test it in the simulator and see the effect. I'm pressing the left arrow keyboard key now. The fish is about to leave the screen and it will then reappear from the right. Here we go. Before we finish the tutorial, it is time to add some comments to our logic. Why would we like to do that, you may ask? Well, adding comments to your game logic is a very important habit that should be acquired as early as possible. Looking at our game's very basic logic, you may think that this is not necessary and the actions are self-explanatory. To that, I would say that today's simple logic is tomorrow's 50 actions event. And while things you write today may seem intuitive, you are less likely to remember what you meant in two weeks' time. In the key up event, we will select the first action and add a comment. The comment describes its purpose. Now, we will do the same thing in the second key event and the move action in the position event. Next, we will document our events. Select our two keyboard events and move them out of the default general group. We will call the new group User Actions. Last, we will do the same with the position event. We will put it in a category of its own and call it Fish Screen Movement. Very good! Our logic is now more welcoming and easy to understand. It is important to remember that comments are only there to help us read more clearly, and they do not affect the performance of the game in any way, so don't be afraid to use them. Save the project as MoFish3. This brings our tutorial to an end. You have now taken your first steps into defining game logic which is the basis for making a fun game. 
I hope you enjoyed watching. See you again in the next tutorial.